The question is often asked, is Buddhist meditation compatible with other religions? In other words, can you be a Christian of a certain denomination, or uh, a Muslim, a Jew, uh, a Hindu, and so forth, and still practice, quote, Buddhist meditation? You'll get different answers from different Buddhist teachers, but I think if you took a consensus, the answer that you would get is yes. And certainly, if you were to ask me, the answer would be yes, big time. Uh, not only is it compatible with uh, any belief system or lack of belief system, uh, it's compatible with a, a rationalist, humanist, uh, skeptical point of view, uh, and I would say it's compatible with any religion that I know of, including the more fundamentalist forms of religion, believe it or not. You might think it, that that's a little strange, but uh, I see it as compatible. I remember uh, a teacher that I knew in LA. He was of the Shingon School, which is the school that I was ordained in. Uh, originally as a Buddhist monk in Japan, and he's the one that gave me my letter of introduction to go uh, to Japan. His name was Bishop Takahashi. They used bishop in English to translate a, a Japanese term. He uh, was the head of the Koyasan Betsuin, or Koyasan Branch Temple in Los Angeles. So he wrote me this letter of introduction that allowed me to get into the original Koyasan in Japan in 1970 to be ordained as a Buddhist monk in that tradition. One of the things I remember him saying was uh, that what Buddhism was about was vis-a-vis -vis other religions was not uh, we want you to be a Buddhist, a convert to Buddhism, etc. It was about Let's see if I can remember the exact words he used in Japanese. Kaishu suru yori mo jibun no michi o fukame yo, I think was what he said. This was a long, long time ago. Uh, meaning, we're not interested in converting people. We're interested in allowing them to deepen the path they already have. And that's a very... Uh, interesting perspective, an interesting way to put it. After his lifetime of living in uh, the United States, teaching Buddhism in this country, and of course encountering all the religions that already exist here, uh, that was sort of his take on it. I'm not trying to get people to be Buddhist, I'm trying to help them deepen the path they're already on. And I totally concur with that way of looking at things. If you look at what is uh, core in Buddhism, you'll see that it's about developing concentration power, uh, it's about developing sensory clarity, it's about developing equanimity, it's about using those qualities to become free from one's, quote, ego, to become free from suffering, and to become free from the screwed up behaviors that are the result of suffering. Certainly no one can object to this kind of core endeavor, and it would be useful, applicable, appropriate for a follower of any religion. All around the world, you'll see that there's a core mystical tradition in each of the uh, major spiritual traditions. Early Buddhism simply extracted that core essence. Then later on, around that grew up a religion called Buddhism that can stand in contra contradistinction to other religions. I think it is perfectly valid to eliminate the religious aspects of the Buddhist religion and go back to the uh, original core, which is compatible with, uh, or at least the original core practice, which is compatible with any religion. The Buddha believed things 
that are not compatible with uh, every religion. He believed in reincarnation, he believed in the gods, and so forth. He was a person of the 6th century BC, his culture. So some of the Buddha's beliefs, uh, I would not say, are compatible with uh, all religions. But one of the refreshing things about the Buddhist tradition, which makes it utterly distinct from others, is it doesn't require a complete buy-in. You don't have to buy the whole package. All you have to, we say, well, take what works for you. Take what works for you. Uh, if you don't believe in reincarnation, then fine. Don't believe in reincarnation. At least I, as a teacher who has been strongly influenced by Buddhism, would say that. Maybe other Buddhist teachers would disagree, and that's fine. But I would say, take the parts that work for you. I'm not alone in this regard. Uh, Mr. Goenka, for example, a very prominent and in some ways very traditional uh, Buddhist teacher in the Vipassana lineage, says essentially the same thing uh, to everyone in their first retreat. He said, well, you know, you might not buy into the whole system, just take the parts that work for you. He has a very nice metaphor for that. If a child was eating porridge and uh, the child thought there was a stone in the porridge, but it was actually the cardamom spice, what would the mother do? Uh, the child says, I don't want to eat the porridge, it has a stone. The mother knows, well, it's not really a stone, but the child thinks it's a stone, sees it as a stone, so fine. The mother would say, just take it out. You don't have to eat it with the stone. Maybe someday in the future you'll, that stone will have a taste for you and you'll like that. Or maybe not. Maybe you'd prefer the porridge without ever having that stone. So I think if we take the core practice of early Buddhism and define it in terms of concentration, clarity, equanimity, and positive behavior changes associated with those, then uh, that's compatible everywhere. It is possible to be a fundamentalist Christian and be profoundly influenced by Buddhist practice. So I would give as an example of a very conservative Christian who was profoundly influenced in his spiritual experience by Buddhism. I would give the example of the Anglo-American poet T.S. Eliot. I highly recommend his poetry. It's a little bit heady, but it's very deep, and he was absolutely a conservative Christian uh, and absolutely profoundly Buddhist in his practice. 